If a picture paints a thousand words, how many words are in a video? Hmm. The, re <laughs> the reason I bring this up, of course, is that uh, as all of you, I'm sure, are aware, I am a firm believer in the use of video for education, training, e-learning, whatever. Uh, YouTube is obviously my way of teaching a lot of people how to do various things. Uh, in this particular case, use Adobe Captivate and uh, Adobe e-learning products in general. But uh, Captivate is a big part of that. Now, as you know, let's take a look at Adobe Captivate 2017 here. For those that are completely aware of this, there is something called learning interactions. And if you scroll down to the very bottom of this, faster than that, there we go. There is actually a YouTube learning interaction where you could click on this guy right here and insert a, I guess you could call it kind of a widget. Uh, it is a widget. It says widget right there. Uh, and you just type in the video URL and you can select different things uh, that you wish and embed your YouTube and it's got all these options here and that is fine. Um, and of course, this is a great way to, to do video in your e-learning because number one, the video re remains on YouTube. As long as your end users have access to YouTube, you're fine. Now, the criticism that you might get from clients is that, oh, we don't want our videos up on the internet for everyone to see. Well, you can actually upload YouTube videos and list them as unlisted. And I know this because I've, I put videos up all the time. Uh, this video, for example, was unlisted for almost a month uh, until it was ready in the schedule and the cycle of videos to come out to actually be released. I recorded this over a month ago, but uh, I left it unlisted for nobody to find. You couldn't search for it. You, you know, no one was notified that I uploaded it. So it, com it remains completely private. And the only persons who can find, um, you know, that particular YouTube video are people who have the exact URL for your video. And if I just bring up one of my YouTube pages here, you can see clearly here, it's not something you could guess at. It's a mixture of upper and lowercase letters and numbers. And uh, the odds of someone finding your YouTube video that was presently unlisted uh, is pretty much zero. So I wouldn't spend too much time worrying about that. But that said, you might want to have a little bit more control over the YouTube interface than what's here. And the other issue that comes to mind is a couple of years ago, Adobe Captivate's uh, widget for YouTube suddenly stopped working because Google, the folks behind YouTube, decided to change their APIs. And so all that e-learning that you created with the YouTube widget suddenly stopped working. So a more full uh, foolproof method might be to go with, uh, in this case here, a web object. And again, you know, you're keeping your e-learning course down to a small size. Obviously, if you don't have access to the internet or, or your users don't have access to the internet, this is not what you want to do. You're going to want to stick with, um, you know, multi-slide synchronized video or event video. But if they do have full access to YouTube and your company doesn't mind putting secret videos up on YouTube for your company's use only, then this is a great way to do it. So let's go into uh, objects, the objects drop down icon and select web. And this will create a web object, as you can see here. And we can start off if we go to uh, one of my videos. Let's find a video where I can uh, pop this in here. Something fun and interesting. Uh, let's go further down. Here we go. Here's a silly short video of me filming myself from the beach in Jamaica, my last vacation. And uh, the advantage of this video is I don't care if anyone sees it. So um, but it was just a short video. It's 1 minute 53 seconds of me promoting my next live stream. And uh, let's just go and jump to the video itself here. We'll just go there. 
It's a terrible video, and I purposely filmed this in portrait mode because I wanted it to look very different from my other videos. But that being said, if you go to the share um, option here, there's the URL for your YouTube video. But if you click on this tab here, you're going to get the embed code. And this is going to be really useful. And I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to minimize this for now. And we're going to select embed code here. And then we're going to just paste that into this field here. I find hitting enter helps because for some reason it doesn't always take it. Now you'll notice that the video is a different aspect ratio than the web object that I've created. Easy way to get around that is if we just go into the embed code itself, it'll actually tell you the resolution. There it is. So we're looking at 315 high by 560 wide. So you can go to your position panel for this object here and set it up for a specific number of pixels. So in this case here, we're going to go 315 by 560 pixels. And that should fill your web object perfectly. And as you can see, it does that quite nicely. Now we can actually check off a line center horizontally. And you could even make it perfectly in the center of your, of your slide here. Now I've set this up for responsive design and if obviously there's a point where that's not going to work out so nicely. But remember this was a portrait video so it might actually be fine. Now what might happen at some point is your stakeholder is going to look at this e-learning and say, Oh well this video is all branded with YouTube stuff. And at the end, it's got YouTube recommended videos and stuff like that. Well, that's not what we want. So one of the things that I discovered was this page, and I'll put this in the description of the video below, where there's all kinds of parameters that you can set. And there's some really great information about embedding uh, YouTube in there. And the thing I think is the most uh, important is the supported list of parameters. So there's things that you can add like autoplay and you can turn on closed captioning by default by using these methods here. And of course there's um, you know the option for coloring the video progress bar a certain particular color red or white. Um, and then you can decide whether you want to give users controls or not. Um, you can choose whether you want to disable the keyboard shortcuts that are associated with uh, YouTube videos. Didn't each, actually didn't even know there were keyboard shortcuts, but uh, you can decide whether you want to do that or not. Um, you can also um, you can also set the parameters value to one, which enables the player to be controlled via iframe or JavaScript player API calls. Don't know anything about that personally. Um, and, and a whole slew of other things. And I thought, well, this sounds almost like computer programming. That's not for me. So one of the things that I discovered, because I use uh, an application for my YouTube videos called TubeBuddy, and this is not an ad for them. I'm not promoting what it is that they do. But when you install the extension for this, and you don't need to sign up for their services to use this, but they have a neat little tool um, that you can you can open up. If we go to this um, this particular video here, uh, you'll see that there are these TB or tool, uh, TubeBuddy tools. And if you click on the tools here, you'll see there's an option for advanced embed. And this is really useful because you can do a bunch of neat stuff here. First of all, you know, here's your embed code, just as it was before when we tried to share it. We can also do certain things like we only want to play the video from the one minute mark to the two minute mark. Or perhaps you want to change the screen size of that particular uh, YouTube video. So let's let's do some customization. We'll plop that into our, our e-learning project and see what the impact is here. So let's change this from, uh, from the 560 by 310 to 853 by 480. That sounds a little bit bigger and it might look nicer as well. Um, what we can do, you can turn on some, some interesting options. 
Uh, I like the idea of hiding as much stuff related to YouTube as possible. Uh, so let's auto hide the play bar. Let's hide suggested videos. Um, we could disable the play controls. Maybe the users uh, just let them sit back and watch. But one of the things that you might want to consider doing is turning on auto play and loop. That way, if they wish to watch the video again, they can just wait for it to start over again. We can hide the video information because that's not really necessary. There should be sufficient context within your e-learning project for this. Um, I don't know if this is important or not. You can experiment with this yourself, but you can disable the full screen functionality. Uh, modest branding sounds like something I would want, so I'm going to choose that. Um, there, I didn't even know there were keyboard controls, as I mentioned. Uh, but, you know, well, let's leave them. If someone knows them, that's great. I like the idea of making my videos more accessible. So let's force closed captioning. Um, privacy sounds good. Don't know what it's offering me, but uh, all that looks good. So I'm going to copy this embed code as it is right now. And let's just minimize this. And you know what? We'll keep this original one here. And I'm just going to duplicate this slide. And we'll select the, uh, the video. And this time here, I'll select that. Click uh, Control A to select it all and Control V to paste the new one in. Enter. And as you can see, it's auto playing for me, which is great. And I'm going to just change the resolution of this. It's 853, so let's bump that up to 853. And the height, can't quite see it there, 480. So let's let's maximize this if we can there. That looks pretty good. So here's our first video. And as you can see, it's very obvious that we are showing a YouTube video. The title is there, um, the share option, um, all this stuff is, is there. And it's not really obvious that this is uh, actually my own video. It could be anybody's video. The assumption would be that I'm just stealing a YouTube video. Let's take a look at it now with the customization that I've done on this slide. So much better results here. We're getting a nice large image. There's nothing other than if I roll over and it just gives me a very modest YouTube uh, link. Now, if you do click this, it will take users to that video. Uh, but again, there's no way they can find this video unless they have access to the e-learning to begin with. So this looks pretty good. I like this a lot better. It's much more simple and it's cleaner and I think it's a better way to share YouTube videos in your e-learning project. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com, follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.